Today, we're going to be taking a look at actually quite a few things that we're going to apply in the scenario of a multimodal e-commerce search engine. Now, when I say there's quite a few technologies involved here, I say that because we're going to be covering something that's called hybrid search, which is a pretty recent thing. So that's the idea of searching across both sparse vectors and dense vectors. If that doesn't make sense, no problem. We're going to explain it in a moment. We're also going to be taking a look at multimodality. So that is where you have multiple modalities of data within the, either within your query or within your search space. So in our scenario, we're going to have both images and text, which is a pretty typical scenario when it comes to e-commerce search. And we're going to be actually mixing both of this. So we're going to have like a, a hybrid multimodal search, which is, I think, pretty cool. And I think, you know, there's a lot of cool ideas that could come from this. So let's jump straight into it. Now, what you can see on the screen right now is a screenshot from Amazon, right? So we can see multimodality is definitely a thing here. So we have images, we have text, um, probably a couple of the bits of information we can we can scrape them there. But I wanna focus on, we have the titles and we have these images. When we're searching for these things, our queries might describe different parts of these images, right? So in this top one, we have, this is basically a keyword matching query, right? So someone is looking for the brand French Connection, uh, they want jeans and they want them to be for men. We would expect in the, product description or in the actual product title, it's probably going to have all those keywords. So in that case, uh, you, you might want to just do like a keyword search, right? Which is, is what we would typically refer to as a sparse vector search, right? Because with these keywords, we can create these what are called sparse vectors using things like TF-IDF and BM25, right? But then on this next one, we have something a little bit different. So we have some descriptive words here. So we're saying, okay, faded, worn out looking, blue as well as descriptive, uh, and then jeans for men, right? Jeans for men, that's fine. It's probably a, this is probably okay as a keyword. This is probably okay as a keyword. But these ones here, you know, they're not really like, okay, blue might be in there in the, in the description, right? In fact, almost definitely will be fine. That's kind of like a, a mix of both. Like it's descriptive and visual, but also, it will probably be in the description. But then faded, worn out looking, you know, maybe faded would be in there, worn out looking, probably not. So these are more descriptive. And honestly, if we're going to search with the more descriptive, like you can think of it as the more human-like way of describing things, essentially a semantic search. If we're going to use that, we ideally want dense vectors. Okay, so you have like a transformer model, if like BERT or something along these lines, and you take that and that will create like a vector in dense vector space. Or if we're thinking about the multimodal side of things, then maybe we don't use BERT, maybe we use something like CLIP, which is a multimodal model. Basically, CLIP can encode both images and text into the same space. So you would create like a, a vector here, and that would hopefully, if you've, you know, also encoded your images, be close to a image vector that kind of represents the meaning behind that text, if that makes sense. If that's a little confusing, I do have some videos on clip. You can take a look at those. I'll make sure there's a link somewhere around here. So we kind of have like a mix of things here. And then we kind of see that here, like even more so, so we have faded blue, maybe faded is a, is a better, better example. So faded is very descriptive. Uh, but French connection is like 100% that's a, a keyword match, right? We want to compare keywords in that scenario. A model like BERT or CLIP probably won't capture that information, you know, this brand very easily. So that kind of makes things more difficult. It's almost like we need a mix of both sparse and dense. And, you know, we can also see that here, right? So we have you know, these images, these look kind of faded here, also these ones here, right? So it'd be great if we can kind of encode those images with a model like Clip, but also at the same time, if we say, you know, in our user's query, they say American Eagle, if I think that's a brand, 
if it has American Eagle in there, we also want to be considering that within our search. So, you know, we basically want to consider these different modalities and we also want to consider these different ways of searching, both semantic based and also keyword based. So how would we actually do that? I kind of already mentioned it, but you take your image here. What we are going to do is encode that with a clip model to create a dense vector, okay? And then down here, we have our description. What we're going to do with that is we're going to use BM25, BM25, uh, to create you know, a sparse vector, all right, which is kind of different. And I'll show you what they look like in a moment. So we're going to create both of those. And then a user is going to come with their query. You know, they're going to search for like some like dark blue boss jeans. Maybe they'll put for men as well in there. I, I don't know. But essentially, they're going to come along this query. Because we want to search for both across both the clip and the BM25 vectors, we need to encode this query with both of those encoding methods, right? So we take our query, it's going to go OK here and here, one for clip and one for BM25, OK? And then we sort of get like two vectors here. What we need to do is we need to take them into a vector database that can handle both of these. So I'm going to use Pinecone for that. There are not many vector databases that can handle this right now. So Pinecone is, is one of the few there. And within Pinecone, we're going to have these vectors are going to be in there, right? They're going to be stored in there. And we're going to use Pinecone to compare them, okay? And what we, we should hopefully see is that these the vectors that match to this image here or, or this listing will be very close to the vectors that we see in our user's query. And we would obviously return that listing. Lay this out very badly, but yeah, we would return this. So that's the general process. Before we move on to code, let's just have a quick look at what was sparse vector, what is the dense vector, just to give you a quick idea of what they might look like. So at the top here, we have a sparse vector. The reason it's sparse is because the information within that vector is very sparsely located, right? There's only a few non-zero values within the vector. Whereas, you know, the majority of the values are zeros, okay? They're, they're kind of like, they don't have any meaning. They're just there. That is what a sparse vector is. For a dense vector, it's uh, different. So you can see here, the majority of the vector uh, has information inside it. The majority of the vector is non-zero values. There's also a difference in dimensionality. So dimensionality of like this vector here, you know, it could be tens of thousands. And, you know, typically it is, right? So if we, for example, use a BERT tokenizer as part of the process to create our sparse vector, we would end up with a, a 30K dimensional sparse vector, right? But then it doesn't take a lot of space to store all of this information because in reality, you don't actually need to store all of it because it's mostly zeros. So what you would end up doing is, all right, so we have a 0.3 here. You'd end up just creating like a dictionary or something along these lines uh, where you have, okay, in position or in index two, three, four, five, we have the value 0 0.3. And then in the index over here is like, 10 or 11 or something, we have 0.1. So then it actually ends up becoming quite an efficient way to store these vectors. Whereas you can't really do that with dense vectors, you just have to store them as is. The typical dimensionality here, it varies, but so very typical embedding dimensionality for these numbers at the moment is 768. But you will see some others, it kind of goes up to like think about the OpenAI embeddings, the current ARDA002 model is like 1536, I think, something along those lines. And some of the older models actually use over 10,000 embedding dimensions, but that, that's really kind of like an edge case. So that kind of explains what we're going to be looking at. We, we just kind of covered a lot of the theory behind all of this stuff. But I think, you know, it will make a lot more sense if we actually go through the the code to create this. So let's jump into that. Okay, so I'm getting the notebook for this from the Pinecone examples repo here in e-commerce search here. And I'm just gonna go and open that in Colab. Okay, so this is a Colab. Uh, for this, I will make sure there is 
a link to this network or to the GitHub repo um, at the top of the video right now. So first thing we come to is the pip install. Now, if you notice that you have transformers and sentence transformers at the top of the notebook, that's a good indication that we're probably going to need to use the GPU. So you just head up to runtime, change your runtime type and make sure you're using a, a GPU there. If you are you know, running locally, try and make sure you have a CUDA enabled GPU or if not, you know, you, you just you know, deal with the slowness of, of CPU a little bit. This isn't a huge data set. So it will take a bit longer, but not too long. Now, this should be updated by the time uh, I release this video. So actually, rather than using this whole pip install, you can actually just do this. So Python client, and we're going to be using gRPC, which is essentially just, it's gonna help us index our vectors more quickly but at the moment this is actually still in beta so i'm using this okay cool they're installed now so come down to here we need to essentially initialize our connection to pinecone for that we need to go to app.pinecone.io so i'm going to head over there now unless you use pinecone uh, you will probably see something like this and also you might actually need to uh, create an account once you have created an account, you will see something like this. You need to head over to API keys. You will have this default key. You have your environment here, which will probably not be internal beta for you. It will probably be like US West one or US East one. You'll need to take this, so copy this and put it into your environment here. And you also need to copy the value here. So you just click here and put that here. I've stored mine in a, in a variable called your API key. So I run that, that will initialize the connection. And then we come down to actually creating our index. Now to create the index, because we're going to be using this, what is called a sparse dense index, which is, it's essentially an index that has both the uh, sparse vectors and the dense vectors in one. To actually use that, we need to make sure we're using a few set items in the create index call. So the metric has to be dot product. And for the pod type, we have to either use S1 or P1. Other than that, I think we're okay. We can kind of change everything else. Now dimensionality, because we're going to be using the clip for the dense embeddings, we need to set that to the same dimensionality as clip, right? Which is 512. So dimension here is always referring to your dense vector dimension. So we create that. Your index name, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay, cool. So we've just created our sparse dense enabled index, and then we connect to it. Now, if you have followed any of these videos before, if you're kind of aware of Pinecone, I think you've probably mostly seen me use this Pinecone index index name. You can use that, it's fine. You know, we don't have to change it because we're using sparse dense or anything like that. You can use index. It's just I'm going to be using gRPC index because the connection handling with this index is better and it's also faster when you're doing upsets, right? So in reality, the index behind this is still the same. It's just the connection uh, is through gRPC rather than REST. So we run that. Cool. And what we're going to do is, so we've got this, uh, the open fashion product images data set. So this Kaggle data set, uh, it just has, you can kind of see in the, in the right up here, all these fashion images. We're going to be using that. Also has like descriptions and everything. We're going to see in a moment, but we're using a subset of that, that Ashrak has created here. So we're going to grab that. It's currently stored on Hugging Face data sets. So you can basically, you can go on huggingface.co, type this in, and you'll be able to find the data set. That will just take a moment to download. Cool, so we can kind of see uh, what we have here. So we have ID, gender, mass category, all, all these different things. In terms of the text, I think the main one we're focusing on is going to be the product display name. I think we also do include a few others. So the majority of the sparse vector will be created with this. And then the, the entirety of the dense vector is going to be created with the image. Now, because we're going to be using image to clip to dense vector. So, what we're going to do is click on this. So we're going to create this metadata 
data frame, which is just going to contain everything except from the image column, okay? And the image column is, we're going to be storing that in a list called images. So now we can take a look at you know, one of the images. We have this uh, uh, index 900, and it's just kind of like a dress or a, a long top or something along those lines. So yeah, we see that. And then if we just take a look at our metadata, so we've now created a, a data frame from this, we have a lot of useful information there, right? So we have the gender, what is it? It's apparel, we have accessories and stuff down here as well. Uh, it's top shirts, you know, all this different stuff. Base color, which is kind of useful. I'm going to use that later. But actually, the most descriptive part here, if I can, uh, if I can get to it, is the product display name. Okay, so it's not super descriptive, but it has kind of like a short product description in there, which is what we're going to be relying on for our sparse vectors. So, what we're going to do says here, we're going to be using all of these metadata fields set from the ID and year to create our sparse vectors. So within our sparse vector, we're going to have men, apparel, top wear shirts, navy blue, season. We're not going to include the year. Maybe you could in, maybe that would make sense to in some cases, but in this case, I, I don't think so. It's casual and we're going to have this uh, product display name. So we're actually going to, within that sparse vector, we're going to have a ton of different things, uh, which is really useful for this sort of information. So let's go down. We're going to create the sparse vectors first. Uh, so for now, I'm using this file here. This will probably get updated pretty soon. So when it does get updated, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave a comment. I'll just pin it to the top of the video, giving you new code for this. But essentially, all that's in this is a BM25 implementation that we're going to be using. Okay, so let's come down to here. Uh, what we're going to be doing, or, or what this BM25 implementation needs, is a tokenizer, right? So we need a tokenizer essentially to split our text into either like words or pieces of words. And we're going to do that using a, a BERT tokenizer. So we run that. So here's the tokenizer function. So we input our text, right? And, and this will need to output basically a list of tokens. It will tokenize those using Hugging Face Transformers tokenizer. We extract those input IDs and then we convert those IDs back into text tokens, right? And with this tokenizer function, we pass that into the BM25 implementation. So basically, BM25 is going to use this to tokenize everything. And then with those tokens, it's going to create our sparse BM25 vectors. Okay. Cool, so just yeah, I'm showing you what this tokenizing function is doing. So it's just essentially breaking everything apart into these little components. But in reality, we're actually going to have a ton of different things in there. We're going to have like all the other columns as well. Now with BM25, the way it works is there are a few parameters within the function that are based off of your sort of larger amount of data. Right, so all of the data you have, you need to feed into BM25. That will allow the model or BM25 to essentially train on that and update those parameters, which will then be used later. So we run that, right? And you can actually see a few of those, so number of docs, the average document length, document frequency, and so on. Cool, so let's come down, we can try, right? So this is going to create the, the query for the for this particular prompt here. So we run that and you can see your BM25 uh, query vector there. Now, when we're actually running this on across all of our documents that we're gonna store in the vector database, we actually only need to store or run the, the doc side of it because the query side is kind of considering the term frequency against the inverse document frequency, but we only need to do that on one side for it to be effective. Right, so you can simplify the calculation, just calculate the IDF part for the things that are stored within the vector database. So that's what we're doing here, run that. Okay, now for the dense vectors, obviously we're gonna be using something different. So we're actually going to use a clip here and we're actually implementing clip through the sentence transformers library. It just makes things easier for us. You can also implement it through the face transformers library as well but this is easier and we're using CUDA if we can, right? So 
you can just print the device to just check what you are using here you know try if you can and use CUDA uh, you can also I believe if you're on Mac you can use MPS but yeah na naturally CUDA is typically going to be faster okay cool and yeah we have our clip model there and what we can do is we can encode we can encode this all right and then we see we get a 512 dimensional dense vector okay cool so now we need to pull that together so we are this is going to be a little bit different if you have watched previous videos when i'm using pinecone so let's uh let's take a look at this okay cool okay that's good right so we're going to be okay tqdm is just so we can see the progress so we can see you know the progress bar as we're going through everything uh this is something new we'll see we'll see it soon uh, batch size we're going to go 200 this will work on on colab and you can even go higher but i find you know this is this works fine and we're going to go through the fashion data set in batches of you know, 200 at a time uh, we find the end of the batch we extract the metadata from that batch so we have you know, our metadata we're just kind of extracting that out uh, in 200 in chunks of 200 items or rows at a time and then so here we're concatenating all that metadata except from the id in the year to create that that single string this is what we're going to use to uh, create our sparse vector okay and you can see that here right so that's how we create sparse vector now for the dense vector we need to extract the images so we get the images from the, the images very or list that we created earlier we convert them into dense embeddings with our dense model uh, which is clip and then here we're just creating some unique ids so the ids are literally just a count in this case uh, but we do need to make sure they're a string obviously if you have actual ids that correlate to, to your items maybe you want to use those and in fact actually we did have ids we just took them out here so you know maybe we could have used that but it's fine we, we don't it's not really so important in this example right and the bit that's different so in pinecone uh, you know there's sort of making things more organized so that we can do things more efficiently so there are a few changes here so we've created our items here typically we just feed them in in like a, a list of tuples which is kind of not that organized so that is changing a little bit here first we create a structure for our metadata and inside that structure we just need to add the meta here so that's why i imported up here this uh, google structure item here object so this is what we create for our metadata for one row of our metadata note that look here we're, we're looping through the batch right and as we're looping through a batch we're appending everything to this upsets list here and so as we go through we have this pinecone grpc vector all right so if you're not using grpc use vector and a grpc vector expects at least two things right which it would be your id and your values so your id is obviously your your record id or vector id values is your dense vector and then for metadata and sparse values you know they're, they're optional right but obviously we do have metadata in our use case and we do have sparse values as well so for the metadata we feed in this uh the structs that we just created and for sparse values we have our grpc sparse values here and i realize actually after creating this that i can just do this okay so let's go through and run this okay and that'll take a little bit of time so i will skip forward and i will see you when it's ready okay so it's just finished and we have okay 44,000 vectors in there and yeah okay we'll start having a look at actually querying those and, and getting some some results so let's come to here i think maybe i need to remove this okay good so let's start the dark blue french connection genes for men right so that's gonna be our query when we're querying we we do need to create our bm25 query vector so we're using transform query here 
we also need to use this. So we're creating our dense vector embedding. So model encode query to list. And we want to search through that. Okay, so with our search, this is, if you've, again, if you watched the previous videos, slightly different. We now have, so we have vector is, I think what we had before, but now we also have sparse vector, which is where we pass in our sparse vector. And what I'm going to do is just return uh, the images based on the results that we get. Okay, so we just get all of these pill image objects. To actually view those, we're going to use this function here, display result which is just essentially going to display some HTML within a notebook, which will show the, the actual images themselves. And with that, we just review them, okay? So our query was dark blue, no, yeah, dark blue French connection genes for men. And this is what we return, okay? So yeah, it seems pretty accurate. But let's see what happens if we kind of weigh the sparse versus dense vectors, right? So what we're going to do is use a function named hybrid scale for this, okay? And essentially, if we take a look here, we have this alpha value. This alpha value must be between zero and one, where zero basically means you're doing a sparse vector search only, uh, because if you see here, one minus zero, so the sparse vector multiplied by one for sparse, uh, but this one will be, this is a dense one. You, you're multiplying by zero here, so you're basically making it uh, meaningless. And then if you want to dense search only, you would, you would use an alpha value of, of one or 1 1.0. So you don't trigger this. So we run this and then, okay, uh, we first do a pure sparse type search. So we set that to zero to do, this, do so run this okay and it looks like we kind of get good results although there are definitely a few women's genes in here uh, so let's have a look at what's actually going on there so we go to product display name all right so on french connection yeah we're, we're doing well right so the keywords are being pulled in we'll find that exact match that's great but the issue is we we do have like men is a component of the of the word woman so we're kind of pulling those in as well so what we can do is, okay, let's just go pure dense and see what, what happens, okay? So this is basing it purely on the images, right? So it, it's looking for dark blue French connection genes. The issue is, does it actually know what French connection is? And if we come down to the, the display name of these items, we see, okay, it's actually returned this other brand, uh, like loco, Locomotive, I think it's called and even spy car and wrangler it does include a few french connection but i think that's just purely by chance rather than it actually knew that these are french connection genes no maybe it did who knows but nonetheless uh, yeah it's not it's not pulling back the french connection stuff so we can actually set the alpha value to it's actually we're not going to use 0 0.07 we're going to use 0 0.07 right so it's actually a basically a sparse search with a little bit of dense in there as well. In fact, not even 0 0.07, 0 0.05. Okay. All right. So we run this. So this is heavily weighted towards sparse, but it still considers some dense and you know, they, they look mostly okay. There is some black here, you know, ideally you'd rather avoid that. Maybe we could increase the, the dense a little bit more to try and avoid that. Uh, but you can see that for the most part, we are getting French connection in here, right? We're still getting some locomotive in here as well, but for the most part, it is French connection. And we're also not including any uh, women's genes in there as well, which is a, a bonus. Cool. Let's try some more queries, which actually I think can demonstrate this pretty well. So we're going to go small beige handbag for women. We're going to go pure sparse first. So looking at the keywords only and okay, not really beige, right? <laughs> we have like every color in there. They're all handbags, which looks good. And obviously we're all for women. So, okay, not bad, just not beige whatsoever. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of dance again. 
All right, and see what happens. All right, so even with that little tiny bit of a dense factor in there, the results are just like 10 times better. We get pure beige. Um, all of these are handbags, right? So that's really good. Um, we can also look here. It's kind of interesting that it didn't pull beige in, even though they all say beige in the actual sparse factor. But anyway, so that's kind of cool. What happens if we just go pure dense? That's kind of interesting, I think. So if we go pure dense, yeah, I think for the most part they're beige, which is okay. But then we're getting in like women's purses in there as well, not just handbags. So we can see that, okay, like Clip is understanding everything as like, it knows that a woman's handbag and a woman's purse are kind of similar. So it's just kind of giving you all of those that are also beige. Um, so, you know, we can kind of see the benefit of having a mix of sparse and dense in here across both modalities as well. All right, another thing, so this is kind of interesting. We're gonna start with this image here and we're going to use this image to search, right? So Clip can also handle images, right? So this is going to be our, our Clip vector and we're also going to add in a text query which is going to become our sparse vector. All right, so let's try those. We're going to be using a, a mix uh, 0 0.3 for this one, right? So what do we have here? So these are all kind of similar to this image, I think. Yeah, I would I'd definitely say so. Uh, you can return the same one here. And they even, I mean, to me, they look like the same person. Right, so obviously Clip isn't, it doesn't know that you just want to focus on the top, it's kind of looking at everything. Right, so it's also going to kind of return people that look similar, uh, which is kind of like an amusing side effect. But the purple component isn't, I, I think maybe it's considered a little bit here and here, but you know, it's not really considered a huge amount there, is it? Okay, so let's try, rather than just relying on the query, let's try and use uh, the Pinecone's metadata filtering, right? Because we know that in our metadata, we have the um, the color of these items, right? So we do the same again, same query, but this time we're going to filter for the color purple, okay? Run this. All right, and then straight away, we get you know much better results. So with, with this, we're filtering for the color purple, we are, querying with both an image and also a text query, right? So we're, you know, we're kind of approaching this search from several different angles, right? You know, basically I, I'm, the point is that we can do search in a ton of different ways and we get some, some pretty cool results. So another one here, we're gonna have this guy in his shirt and we're gonna go with a, a green shirt, right? Going to add that to our filter straight away. And yeah, straight away. So one thing is, okay, we don't even include like it needs to be men's shirt anywhere in here. The clip model is kind of handling that for us because it knows we're looking at a guy initially. So it's just retaining us other guys. Like these to me seem like we're actually filtering for green here. So it means that this shirt is for some reason marked as green. I don't know why, but nonetheless, uh, we, for the most part, you know, they're kind of that sort of green type of color, kind of faded like this one here. Uh, so it works pretty well, I think. Cool. So yeah, if you're, if you're done with the index, uh, obviously, if you want to kind of play around with it a little bit more, feel free and go ahead to. But once you are done, uh, you can delete the index just to you know, save your resources. If you just have the one index, it's free anyway. But if you have multiple, obviously you, you, you'd be paying for this. So, I mean, that's it for this example of, it's like a hybrid multimodal search for e-commerce items. As I mentioned at the start, we just kind of blazed through a ton of different technologies. Like we had filtering in there, hybrid search in there, multimodality, kind of dived into obviously with the hybrid, dived into the embedding methods, the sparse and dense. So we covered a ton of things, uh, but I think it's kind of cool to see how many different ways you can search and how you can enhance your search. But anyway, 
that's it for now. Uh, so I hope all this has been interesting and helpful. Thank you very much for watching the video and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye.